Okay, hi, uh, welcome. My name is Derek and I am your instructor for our Data Structures and Algorithms course. Um, and in this video, our purpose is, I, I want to give you kind of a end-to-end -end example of how you're going to be working on assignments for this class using the, um, the, the repository and the dev box. So, so I'll do this on Visual Studio Code um, and, and show you an example uh, assignment that's pretty similar to what you have to be doing for assignment one, okay, but with just some different functions that we have to write. Uh, but before I do that, let me just mention one or two things about the unit test framework um, and about C++ code in general, okay? So all of our assignments in this class are multi-file projects, so that just simply means that the, instead of the code just being in one file, which may be all you did um, in the classes before this, we're breaking up our code into multiple files, okay? So, uh, and this is not uncommon, um, you know, so, so anytime you get slightly more complex than a, a trivial sort of uh, program or uh, a program meant to, to, for a class to learn something, uh, you have to break it up into multiple, or it's good to break it up into multiple files to, to help you kind of understand it better and, and deal with the complexity, right? So, C++, which inherits from C, basically breaks um, all code up into two uh, parts. The, um, the, the declaration uh, goes into what's known as the header file, so that'll have .h if you're using just regular C or .h++ or we use .hpp for C++ header files, okay? So basically that only has, that basically just has the, the function signature or maybe the class signature. So this is just a definition of things. It's not the actual implementation of things, okay? Um, and, and the other thing, um, so, so the, the, the pound, we, we use the pound include to include code uh, in a header file, okay? So, so that's, when you do a, a, a pound include, you're actually including a header file. Uh, and, and pound include really isn't, very sophisticated. It's basically just doing like a copy and paste. So if you found the file in the file system and you copied the contents of the file and replaced the pound include with the contents of the file, that's really all that a pound include does in C. So more modern languages do uh, much more sophisticated things when you're importing code for, for use than, than that. But um, that's what we do with C and C++. So if you ever see these pound includes, so we'll see examples of both of these. So, so headers that we create ourselves, we usually enclose in double quotes. Um, so that that indicates that it's it's really a header file of our own or this part of our project, versus header files that we enclose in, in inside of these angle brackets. Those are header. Th those indicate that these are system header files. So the the C plus uh, include macro will look in a different location to try and find those to include in your program than it will where it tries to look if you use the double quote. So, so, so we always split things up into two files, the header, which is the definition, and then the implementation goes into a .c or a .c++ or I meant a .cpp file. So we use .cpp files um, um, by convention for our class projects here class assignments. Okay? So what I mean by the implementation, that's that's really just the function, the actual definition of the function, or when we get into classes, it's, it's the actual def implementation of the member functions for the class. Okay, um, and, and really, these are the files that get compiled into object files and linked together into our executables. All right. Um, okay, and, and a word about the unit test framework. So, um, you're going to be using, uh, for all of the assignments, the, the catch2 unit test framework, okay? So basically, what, what, what you do for assignments in this class is I wrote a set of tests that you have to write code to uh, that will pass those tests, okay? So, so basically, you're going to be writing code, uh, and then you're going to be uncommenting these um, unit tests uh, and trying to get trying to, to write your code so that they can make the unit test pass, okay? Um, and once you get all the unit tests to pass for an assignment, you probably, um, you know, have, have completed the assignment successfully, basically, all right? So, unit tests and unit test frameworks are a very common um, thing in programming um, 
shops nowadays. Um, so, so it's good to get to, to, to learn how to use these and to see these. So uh, the, the way I write uh, unit tests is I write test case. Uh, so a test case is just really a, a group of a related tests. You'll see an example of these test cases here in a second. Okay. Um, typically, they're related, so all the tests will, will test like a single function is, is the most typical thing that a test case does, okay? Although, um, for, for more complex functions, you might have multiple test cases uh, testing a single function where they test different aspects of the function. So, so you, you can break it down in different ways, but, but that's kind of what a test case is. And really, each one of the tests is really just an assertion, okay? So, so you'll see what these are, but it's basically just something like... Uh, check that this is true. So, so after I call your function and get a return value, check that the return value is equal to what I'm expecting it to be. Okay. And if it is, you pass the test. And if it's not, then you don't pass the test. All right. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of teaching you uh, a style of programming known as test-driven development in this class. Okay. So um, and, and this is a kind of incremental code development. So basically, what you do for the assignments for this class is, is you write a, a prototype just to make certain that the code uh, and the test compiles, but, the te but initially your test will be failing. Uh, and then you incrementally add code to get a test to pass. Um, and then once you get one test pass in, then you move on to the next test, okay? And so, so, so in terms of test-driven development, you, you try to write very small chunks. You only want to write what's needed to get the next test to pass, and then only when it's passing do you go move on from that point um, and start trying to work on the next test or the next part of the test, all right? So let's... Um, Let's give an example to make that um, more concrete here, okay? So I got Visual Studio Code open already, and I've got our file project open already. Just as a reminder, let me go ahead and close this um, again. Um, close folder, control KF, I should remember the keyboard shortcut. Um, so to work on uh, assignments uh, and projects for this class, always start by opening a folder, so that, or, or, or selecting the open folder. Don't worry about workspaces. Um, and, and always just open up the root of our repository, the, the COSC2336 for this particular class. Okay. Um, so the way this in general works is that, um, so, so I'm going to use... So for your first assignment, you'll be working on assignment one, but I'm going to use this example one, which is pretty similar to the assignment one, okay? Um, and I'm going to start by opening up, uh, so, so like for uh, assignment one, um, the, um, the task here is, is we're going to write a, a few functions. You've got to get these functions to pass the, the unit test that I have. So I want to open up my unit tests, and I want to open up my header.hpp file first. Um, so my example, example one functions to HPP. In assignment one, you have an assignment one tests and assignment one functions to HPP, okay? So uh, in this example assignment, um, um, oh, and by the way, in your repository, um, I've already checked in the, the complete working solutions for this, so I'm going to be building these from scratch, okay? Um, so the, uh, and, and actually, I gave you a little bit more than this uh, for your assignment one, so I actually gave you the function prototypes. Let me open up the uh, example one functions.cpp as well here. So, oh, like, like this, so no, that, that, that's right. So basically the same way here. So I've got the function prototypes already for the two functions, we're going to write for this example, but we just don't haven't written the functions yet. Okay. Um, so, the, so this is these are these are examples of function documentation. Okay. So, so I document the two functions that we're going to write uh, here. So, later on in this class, I won't give you this function documentation. You'll have to write these on your own. But you have to have the same format. So, all function documentation is you describe the you give the the a short name of the function or or just the the name of the function again. You describe the function in one or a few sentences, and then each input parameter value, you use an at param tag um, and describe the value. And then the, if, if, the val if the function is a, returning val a value returning function, you use this at returns tag 
to document the return value from the function. Okay? So all the, the assignments I give you should compile and run as given without you doing anything um, initially. Okay, so let, let's check that. So if I do a control shift C to, to run the make clean, which I fixed from my last video, so control shift C does our make clean, and then let's try to build it. Control shift B um, to build. So again, like usual, this, this is compiling the unit tests. So the unit test is one separate file. It compiles that into an object file. Uh, when it's done with this, it'll try and compile the exa uh, example one functions.cpp into an object file, and then it'll try to link those two together into the unit test executable, um, the file name test. Okay? Um, and then make all will also build the debug target as well. So, so, um, so yeah, here we, we build the, the functions object, and then now we're linking those together into the test executable. Now we're going to build our main and link that together uh, with example one functions to create the debug. Uh, so if I need to do any debugging, I've also got my debug executable that we can use here. All right. So like I said, I mean it's it's actually compiling, and you can also run. But at, at the so a lot of the assignments I give you initially actually the the, the unit tests are there, but they're all commented out. Okay. Um, and I'll say why they're coming it out in a second. But but um, so so we can run the test, the unit tests. But since there's no actual tests, you know they're all coming it out. There's no test to run, so it'll just say no test ran here. Okay. So the first thing you should do uh, always just make very small changes to your code. So first start by co always start by commenting out uncommenting only the first test case, okay? So in this case, this, this is the test case for the is prime function, okay? So we're going to write a function that given a um, an integer value should return a Boolean result. So if you read the, the documentation here, so it should return a, a true if the, the number is prime, and it should return false if the number is not prime, okay? So uh, my my coach is still compile and run, but the test probably won't. Well, the uh, no, I'm sorry, the, the the code won't compile now because we're expecting that there's a, a function called is prime, um, and we should find that function by including your example one functions .hpp, Okay, but we've got no function prototype, and and we've got no implementation yet for is prime function. So. Uh, if we do our build, um, when it tries to rebuild example one tests, um, it will fail here uh, because the is prime um, was not declared. You know, this is prime identifier um, um, is undefined. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the function prototype. Um, and just get get it so we can still compile, okay? So, so I mean, our test might not be uh, passing, but but I want to get back so that my code will compile here, all right? So the way to do that um, is we have to have what's known as a function prototype. So, um, you know, you can read the description, or you can look at the test here. So I, I can see that is prime should take an integer as an input, okay, so, so it has one parameter, so notice all these calls to in, is prime takes one parameter, um, and it's returning a, a Boolean result, okay, so that might not be exactly clear, but when check, if is prime returns true, check will be, will pass, okay, so this is checking, you can read that as check that is prime is true, okay, or when we expect a false value, so when six is not prime, so we, we should, we should expect that is prime returns false if we ask if um, six is prime. Or four, I skipped over four, so four is not prime, so that should return false. All right. So, but but anyway, the 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 function prototype, the full function prototype is you know you have to have the name of the function, the the declare the input parameters, and then if it's a value returning function, you have to, to declare the the return type. So in this type, in this case, it's returning a boolean result. All right. 
So um, um, it still won't build, um, although this might make is prime happy. Or, I'm sorry, this might make um, example one tests happy because it includes this and it finds a function prototype for it. So, so um, um, example one tests will be able to compile because it sees now that there's a declaration for is prime. All right. So if we compile this. Um, example one test will be happy. Right? It, it'll it has enough information to, to to compile this code now, since somebody says okay, th there's a function somewhere that somebody's going to create that's named is prime that takes one integer as an input value and returns a boolean as the result. Okay, um, so so that allows this example one test to compile, but uh, example one functions will compile because it, it, I mean, basically it doesn't have any code in it right now. But when we try and link, um, you know, we'll, we will get, we will still get the undefined reference. Um, although, huh, uh, that's interesting. So yeah, the I'm, so there might be something here that I should fix. Um, I was expecting it to, to be able to find that problem there. But but yeah, looking at the output from the uh, the build we can see we had some uh, undefined references, okay? And, and again, that's because we haven't actually implemented, okay? So, so we have a function prototype, but we need to write the actual code for this function, okay? So whenever you write the code for the function, it should match the, the, the function prototype. So I often, just to be completely certain that it matches the function prototype, I often copy the function prototype. So I forgot to mention, a function prototype has a semicolon on the end, right? But then the actual function implementation, you're going to have the, the curly braces um, after your function signature where you put the code, okay? Now, again, at this point, this is, this is an example of incremental um, code development. So don't go off and write 10 lines of code at this point, trying to implement is prime. You're, 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 the, my code is not compiling right now. So, so whenever your code is compiling, Stop everything and get it back to a state where it compiles the tests so you can run the tests um, and, and see if the tests are passing or not. So, so I want to do the simplest thing that will allow me to compile. So, so I just need to return something. Let's return true. Okay. Let's say no matter what you ask me, I'll say, it's, yeah, sure, it's a prime number. All right. Now if I build... You know, um, so I, I probably should have put in like an, an error here uh, so you would see an example. So, but it actually was able to build. So, so let's say, again, like I said, if it wasn't building, but if I tried to do something to fix that to make it build, let's say I forgot to, or let's say I returned um, uh, an integer value. Um, although, I guess an integer value, how about, let's say I tried to return a floating point value. So it's a bool, you can't really convert a float to a bool. Or maybe you can. Uh, um, yeah, okay. Uh, let me do a real error. So, about no return statement at all. So, I've got a body, but it's blank. So, in this case, um, 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 this is actually normally a warning, but. Um, uh, we're, we're treating all warnings as errors um, in our build here. So yeah, in this case, uh, the, the, the function is supposed to be returning a value, but um, um, we're not returning a value. So, so the build is still not building completely, right? So, so we still don't have an executable. So let's go back. Um, so let's get it to build now. Okay, always stop whatever you're doing if you're not building and, and remove stuff or get stuff back in there and get it back to a, a, um, a good build state, okay? And the best way to make certain that you always have code that can successfully build is to only add one or two lines of code at a time. So never go off and write, you know, five functions and, and then try it and go back and debug them one by one, all right? That, that is not a good way to proceed, okay? So now that we're building, I can try my tests, all right? So, so control shift T, run, run the tests. So this is the first example of seeing some example output from our unit tests, all right? So um, 
So since it's the first time seeing this, let's explain it a little bit. So going back up to the top, we can see that uh, by default, only the failing test will print out, okay? So notice that the first failing test was 40. It was on line 40 here, okay? So unfortunately, and I don't know, if, I'll have to look and see if there's like a, a way that we can have it sense uh, test output so you can double click on this. But in this case, you have to use the line numbers, right? So if you look at line 40, that's this test right here, right? But it actually passed uh, the first three tests because we're returning true um, and we were expecting true uh, because one, two, and three are prime, right? So, so that, that's good for those, but, it, you know, it, it, we're not given the, the correct, we're not going to be able to just hard code in the result, right? So, um, so so it fails for this one, and it's going to fail for everyone, for any, every number that's not a prime number where we're expecting false to be returned. That's what all these failures are here right now, okay? So, at this point, some, you know, kind of uh, smart Alex then start, you know, saying, well, the simplest thing I can do to get a test to pass, if we're talking about test-driven development, is to just start hard coding in like a uh, like a big if-else statement or a switch statement. Okay, so um, so if value equals one, return true. Else if um, So the value is three. And so now I can add for four. Hard code in the value. So, so I'll still be passing my first three tests. Um, and um, but um, and, and now I should be able to pass my fourth test, right? If I save here, it should reformat my code to conform to, to style guidelines. So it's going to add in the parentheses. I'm going to get a uh, typing error there. All right. So let's try that. So that should build, um, hopefully. Uh, nope, doesn't build. So so the control, oh, so I don't have a return statement. So, you know, again, this this is normally a warning, but we're treating warning as errors. So it could be the case that it's not one, two, three, or four, in which case, even though this is a value returning function, we're, we're not returning a value. So let's uh, put in something, a default. So if it's not any of these that we hard-coded in here, um, uh, we'll return false by default. All right. So that finally builds, um, and we can do um, our tests. So now we get up to line 43. Okay, so, so we, we, we pass is prime 4, but um, um, so since we're pass, returning false, though, by default, um, um, the prime number 5 gets the wrong answer now um, at line 43, all right? And now everything that's prime is going to get the wrong answer since we're returning false for this. So, yeah, I mean... Um, um, so in the spirit of test-driven development, I could just continue doing that, but uh, but but of course you should realize, I mean, th this is not um, um, the 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 actual solution because we need to be able to support any integer value, and, and we can't hard code a lookup for all possible integer values that can be represented by an int type here. Okay, so we're gonna have to rethink our approach. Okay, um, so. The simplest kind of brute force thing to do would be um, we could test every number from 2 up to the value. So, so a prime number is a number that's only divisible by 1 in itself. So if I test all the numbers from 2 up to value but not including value. So let's say um, test divisors. We want to test divisor starting at two, uh, and, and here's I mean another thing that I'm going to be emphasizing in this class. You know, try and always use good meaningful variable names. Okay, so so I'm, I'm testing divisors, and I want to test divisors two, three, four, so on. So that implies I want to have a loop that tests all these. So 
So I want to go from 2 up to the value minus 1. So I'll explicitly start at 2, so the divisor starts um, at, at 2, and it goes up to value minus 1, uh, where inside of the loop we're incrementing um, uh, divisor each time. So, so the first time divisor will be 2, then the second time it will be 3, 4, 5, and so on. Okay. So then I can, I can just check, um, uh, so, so I might want to try and make certain that my code compiles at this point since I added in a line of code. Right. So it should still compile, but of course now I'm going to be not passing um, tests still. I'm not going to be passing my first three tests since I'm returning false by default. Right. So, so my first failing test, um, I've kind of gone backwards in a sense, so my first failing test is the first test in the test case at, at line 35, all right? So, but basically I want to say that if um, the value, so mod, percent is the modulus operator, so if we ever find a divisor, that where the remainder is zero, that means that the divisor evenly divides the value. So that must mean that the value is not prime, right? Because a prime number can only do, be divided by one in itself. And, and, and we found a counterexample, some number that's not one in itself that can actually divide it, okay? So uh, if we ever find that, the answer is false. You know, it's not prime. Otherwise, if, if we, so this is, I think, probably uh, a working solution here. So, so otherwise, um, I'm not certain what those symbols are there. We'll, we'll find out. Oh, oh those, those allow you just to clap stuff, okay. Um, so otherwise, if, um, if, if we check every divisor and we don't find one, that's, uh, that, that can divide the number, we've proven that the number um, is prime, okay? So, um, well, let's try it. So we're still building, hopefully. Yep, so we built everything correctly. And now let's run our unit tests. Yay, okay, so green, all tests pass. That is what you always want to strive for, okay? Um, although we're not quite done here because you've only passed the tests, uh, I've only passed the tests of the first test case, okay? So normally for your assignments, you're going to have more than one test case because um, they'll give you more than one function to write for the assignment or more than one class or, or different things like that, all right? So if you look through here, I mean, these are typical for uh, individual unit tests, you know, so... So we, we test all the prime, all the values up to 20 to see whether they're prime or not, and then we pick a few other really big prime numbers to test that are random. So two big ones that, that I know were prime, um, and two big ones that I know um, are not prime, right? Test those. Um, all right, so hopefully you get the hang of it. So, so that's your kind of flow. You know, always add just a line or two of code, make certain it builds. If it builds, check your tests. If your tests aren't passing, if it's building but your tests aren't passing, go back and look at the first non-passing test and, and think about why isn't it passing and, and what can I do to add, you know, and try not to think too far ahead, okay? So test-driven development, you know, you try to only write something to pass the next test, but, you know, it, you don't have to take that to an extreme, but, but, but still you should try and focus on, okay, where am I at right now and what small changes can I, incremental changes can I make um, um, to get past my, my next test right now, or my next couple of things that I'm trying to get into my function or class that I'm writing, all right? All right, so, and, and we're already 30 minutes on this video, so let's go ahead and just kind of finish up. Um, so, just to, to reiterate here, my second set of view tests is to, we want to write another function that um, given two ranges of value finds all of the prime numbers um, in that range, okay? Um, and what this function is going to do is going to count up the number of primes that it finds and returns that count. So that's what we use for the unit test. So, so when you call find primes, it says I found nine primes 
starting at one, and, and, and this is inclusive, should be inclusive, okay? Um, uh, start from start to end being inclusive. So uh, among the numbers from one up to and including 20, um, there's nine primes, and yeah, those are the nine primes. Okay, but but yeah, I just uncommon something. So again, let's, um, so, so again, we'll be back to, we're not gonna be able to build if I try and build because we don't have any definition for fine primes, okay? Um, I can make my compilation of the example one tests happy. Um, so in this case, find primes, you have to always kind of look at the signature in order to, 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 to get the function prototype or the member function prototype. So find primes, the, the name of the function is always easy. You, you, you'll be able to see that on the unit test. But it has to exact. Um, one thing I should mention: you're not allowed to change these unit tests. Okay, uh, I mean, if you do, you're. I mean, I'm going to test it with my original unit test. So, so if you, if you, if you um, are tempted to, to change the unit test instead of getting your code fixed to pass the unit test, uh, you're you're going to not, you know, pa you're not, not going to pass the assignment, or at least you won't get a good grade on the assignment. All right. Um, so, I mean, the only thing you'll normally do for this unit test file is uncomment some of the unit tests, uh, like, like I just did for the, the, the first test case, and then uh, I, I just uncommented the second test case here, okay? So, find primes is the name, so, so I have to exactly match that name. I can even copy and paste that name to make certain that I spell the name correctly. Um, and I take th three parameters here, so the third parameter is supposed to be uh, whether I display on standard output the values or not. I, I think I'm going to skip over on that on this video, so you can look at the solution in example 01 for that. But but I do have to have those three parameters uh, if I don't if I want to be able to pass this unit test. Okay, so I need an integer, uh, the begin and end of the range that we're going to check. and a Boolean value, okay? So in this case, what, what does what does this find primes return, ask you? It returns an integer. So before it was returning a Boolean, but now, since it returns an integer, when we do our, our uh, test, we, we check what the return value, whether it's equal to what we were expecting or not. So we're expecting that it should find nine primes from one in, in the range from one to 20. But, but anyway, so this returns an integer. All right, so that should be enough to um, get um, the example one test to, to compile because we gave it the prototype, so it now knows how to compile these uh, unit tests here. All right, so if I build that, I should see that example one tests will compile successfully. Uh, but you know we won't be able to link again because I haven't done the implementation. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna wait for it to, to fail here. Let's go ahead and get that going here. So um, let's let's get our implementation going. So like usual, I'll copy my function prototype so I get my signature exactly right, um, and I'll put it in here where it needs to go. But we'll replace the semicolon with um, some curly braces so I can have my function body. Um, but again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go off and start writing a bunch of code. Let's just return zero, so I can see whether I've got everything now back to a, comp a state where everything is compiling. All right. Um, let's save that uh, and let's try build again. All right. So the build succeeded that time, so we didn't get any error messages when we were linking. But we can run our tests, um, and you know, and, and we fail. So notice that our message here that the, of the two, we've got two test cases now, one pass. So our is primes are still passing, which is good. So what we did didn't mess up um, any uh, code we already had in there. So that that's one of the powers of unit tests. Okay, it, it gives you confidence that if I'm adding new code or correcting bugs, that I'm not breaking things as I'm adding new stuff. So all my is primes are still passing, um, and my first failing test. So what you should always do is go and find the first failing test um, and start from there. Right. So my first failing test is line 77, which is this one. You know. So we're you know, obviously we're returning zero and we're expecting nine.
Right. Um, and let me just give an implementation. So kind of like, like your first assignment, uh, I, I did it this way because I'm requiring you to reuse the is primes. Okay, so, so I want to use reuse my is primes function inside of find primes to implement find primes. All right. So um, so I, what I need to do is check uh, the values starting at begin. That right, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna basically test every value, uh, you know, um, um, you know. So if I start, if, if begin starts at one, I'll start one. I'll try one, two, three. Uh, I got to declare the type of that variable there, All right? And up to n. And then all we're gonna do is reuse is prime here. So if it's true that the value is prime. We're going to do something, okay? So here, um, we're expecting um, a count. So I need to add in another, right? So um, at this point, you know, I added in some code here. So, so let me make certain that um, it compiles. So it doesn't. Oh, so we don't have a return statement. So let's let's go. So I was beginning to jump a little bit ahead, but so I know that I want to have like a count. Just to be really verbose or uh, really descriptive of the variable number of primes, I'm going to use this to count them up, and I'm going to return that result. Right. Right, so that this should build, but but will still be failing because I'm effectively, even though I've got a loop in here, I'm effectively returning zero still um, as a result. So so we build, but that's good, right? So so I know that I'm still in a compilable state, uh, but we're still failing um, our um, unit tests here for the second test case, right? But all I have to do is that if it is prime, increment my number of primes found count. All right, um, and yeah, that's probably it. That that probably let's try it um, because uh, I mean I still have to add in uh, this third parameter here and kind of display these primes as I find them. Right, but like I said, I don't think I'll do that since we're already at uh, past thirty minutes here. Um, so that builds, uh, oops, <laughs> already built, um, and let's go control shift T, try our tests, let's see if we're running, okay. and there we go, so everything's green, all the tests pass, um, and we're all, you know, good, um, uh, th that's what you want, right, so if you, if you can get that all test passing for all of the unit, for all the test cases for an assignment, it's not a guarantee that you're 100% correct, so I might have some additional tests th that I give of, of some particularly tricky cases or things, uh, in which case I usually at least give you a warning that you ought to think about this. I might not be testing some things, but uh, but but usually you're pretty good, 95, 99%, or 100% of the way if you can get all of your unit tests to pass for the, 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 the assignment. Um, all right. So, um, that was our example of working on assignments for this class. Your first assignment is very similar to this, but I ask you to write some different, uh, two different functions, two other functions, not besides doing primes, all right? Um, so I hope that that will give you a good start um, and that, that you kind of understand kind of the workflow that's been set up for you in order to do the assignments for this class. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video. So, and I will see you in the next one.